like from the get-go, as soon as you hear those words, this did not feel like an extra AEW show. This did not feel like Dynamite on a Saturday night. This felt not just like a whole new show, but start to finish, this felt like a brand new promotion that was getting off the ground for show one here. Uh, I don't know if there were any new faces, but there are faces we had not seen in a long time, and the presentation felt totally different. In some ways, in most ways, good. In some ways, there were a lot of uh, tech errors where Kevin Kelly wasn't sure when they were or were not going to commercial, or the House of Black. Well, was the reason the reason for that is because of fight. All right. If you have a if you're outside of the U.S. and you're you have fight uh, plus, you can watch the AW shows and there are no commercials. And so, you know, they run the show straight through for two hours because of the viewers on fight. And so he was not used to the idea that, well, we're off the air, but we're not off the air. So I have to take us to commercial, but then it would be like if you were doing a radio show and you were like, back in a moment with Wrestling Observer Live, and then you had to actually keep going and then come back to Observer Live, even though you'd been live well, the entire time. I see your point, but I was watching it on television on, uh, I believe, TBS, TNT, oh, it was TNT. But uh, there were still moments where he would throw it to commercial. They wouldn't go to commercial, and a few minutes later, yeah. he throw it to commercial again. So I did love, I did love the new set, big ass set, actu- man. Oh, it's huge! The screens the everywhere, yeah. very shiny. The screens yeah. are cool because they're not on the outside of the lighting rig; they're on the inside, slanted it, slanted down. Ah. it's very cool the way it, the the way the screens are. But uh, yeah, the set's beautiful. Yeah, the, the production was was uh, great. The set looked great. The show looked great. It looked great enough that I've told people this story before, but you know there are people in WWE that will watch Dynamite and they will make fun of Dynamite's production right. because you know there there are things you know there are things that they do in WWE that are right, even sure. though it's sure. just that's what they've decided is right. It's not yeah. actually right. Like what's right is can you see the fucking show? Is it in color? You know, other than that, it's like it's right. But, you know, there are things that they do that, you know, that's the way it's got to be done. So they watch Dynamite. And they're like, oh, it's all wrong. This is blah, blah, blah. But uh, they watch Collision. They thought, God damn, this show looks great. So uh, it was a very, very well produced uh, television show. Yeah. And I know it wasn't shot any differently, but it looked like more vibrant. I don't know how to describe it. It just it was brighter and better lit. I don't know. But it as Vinny said, it looked like a whole new show. Yeah. It began with CM Punk coming out. Who would have thunk this? Uh, CM Punk, everyone, remains very, 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 very good at doing pro wrestling promos. Uh, mm-hmm. he's beloved here in Chicago. First thing he does is remove the AEW logo from the microphone to indicate this is himself talking, not uh, any company line. Emphasizes it's a business, a business of grown-ups. He takes credit for selling out a lot of buildings, many of which I don't believe he sold out. Then asked if he was telling lies. I don't know. All right, whatever. Uh, said there are some people who hate me. Which... Well, you know, he has sold out the uh, United Center. He did not sell out the United Center this time, mm-hmm. but he has sold out the United Center. And I'm sure that he has sold out. I don't believe every building with a roof in all of Chicago, because there's a lot of buildings with roofs in Chicago. Yeah. I'm not sure that he sold out, for example, a... Staples. Sure. Staples, a random Staples or a Five Red guys. Robin. Yeah. Sure, yeah. 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 But uh, people who know, know more about this than I do are pointing out things like he claimed to have sold out Boudicca Hall. And right. uh, they were disputing that claim. Regardless. Uh, he said, some people love me, some people hate me, which inspired a fuck the elite chant. But either way, you know I'm right. He got very inside baseball. Name dropped David somebody who, yes, I know who it is now. Actually, I knew who it was before I watched the show, but uh, a bigwig, a network bigwig. Who called him you a- know, the funniest thing is it wasn't until today that I figured out what one, Phil, one Bill Phil was supposed to be about. Because he's telling the story, and I'm trying to figure out, why is he calling you one bill, like one dollar? Or is it like a hundred dollar bill? Or what's he talking about? It's supposed to be one billion. The bill is billion. Because they're they're playing off the rumors that AEW had signed a billion-dollar deal, which they have not. 
But uh, that's what the one bill Phil was supposed to be about. Not that Phil was was like worth a dollar or which I did. Like when I heard it, when I heard it, you know, I heard the end where he talks about counterfeit bucks. And that's all anyone was talking about was that he made a Mm -hmm. shot at the young bucks. And so, you know, once you hear that line, your brain's like, oh, my God, he made a shot at the bucks. And you forget the whole one bill, uh, one bill Phil line. And it wasn't until later that I really thought about it. And it was explained to me that the bill is for one billion. He's so valuable to uh, AEW that he's one bill, yeah. one billion. So a nickname, a nickname that needs an explanation. And uh, uh, David, somebody who I'd never heard of before, he mentioned it, and it was later explained to me. So, uh, And the, the upshot of all this is, yes, he called the Young Bucks the counterfeit bucks, who promptly noted on Twitter that if this was 2018, they would already have counterfeit bucks T-shirts up on ProWrestlingTees.com. It's true. Yeah. So he's not going to apologize people who think they're owed an apology, I'm sorry, the only people softer than you are the wrestlers you like. He holds up a mysterious red bag. Says the contents of this bag, I was never pinned for. No one ever made me submit for it. I don't have this because just because, just because I had the best dog collar match. I won the match. Nobody in this company could take this from me. Nobody can fill my boots. And uh, his music played and he was done. And as I noted, CM Punk outstanding at doing pro wrestling promos. See, I can't figure out why. Uh, I can't figure out this this bag thing. Maybe that's the whole deal. Is you're just supposed to be wondering what's in the bag. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. you're supposed to think it's the AEW title, and you know, the, everyone was going, well, you know, they don't have a belt laying around, and then other people were like, well, you know, in storyline, MGF should have that belt, and you know, MGF doesn't have that belt. He's got his uh, Burberry belt, and so you know, I can't figure out why they didn't actually show the belt. Unless the idea, I, I, I mean, I can't figure any of this out. I mean, obviously the thing was get CM Punk back, have him cut a promo, get people talking about the promo. But ultimately, my really the only issue I had with the promo was he is building up a match with MJF that is not happening anytime soon. Yep. There's at least two big matches before he gets to MJF. One of them obviously is Tanahashi at Forbidden Door, and one of them is Adam Cole. And to me... You don't want the Tanahashi match and the Adam Cole match to feel like secondary matches on our way to the big match. So to me, he should have either not mentioned MJF at all or they shouldn't have started the MJF program or the uh, the MJF Adam Cole program or they need to put it on the back burner because they did the draw and go directly to CM Punk and MJF champion versus former champion because having this bag coming out every week with the bag and meanwhile we're supposed to be you know invested in the adam cole feud or the uh whatever like once you do that you know that that tanahashi's not winning the belt cole's not winning the belt no one's winning the belt till we get to cm punk versus mjf so i didn't think that that was the right thing to do because also you know the show ended and we have no idea who punk's facing next I mean, there were no teases. There were no hints. Nobody ran in. They had nothing built up for Forbidden Door. They had nothing built up for really anything. It was like, this was just, hey, CM Punk's back. He's going to do a promo. But when the show is over, my question is, okay, well, what the fuck's the guy going to do now? What's his next program? Who's he feuding with? We don't know. I like that he spent uh, most of the promo talking about business and the wrestling business. And then at the end, he brings in, gets in a jab on the counterfeit bucks. Are they going to do business, or is that just a no. cheap line? Exactly. Uh, well, in the in the uh, in the daily update today, Dave said that the line was approved by management, and I'm mm-hmm. not sure. I presume that just means by Tony Khan, but uh, you know, as far as I know, there's zero interest in, in like. There's not going to be a Punk Elite feud. And I think Punk, even in that, that ESPN interview, said the, the match is not going to happen. So, you know, I know a lot of people heard it and thought, oh, my God, they're, they're going to be doing the match. They're going to be doing the match. They're not going to be doing the match. That Whatever he said was whatever he said, but it was not to set up a future match with CM Punk and FTR versus the Elite or whatever. Okay. I'm going to assume for the time being that Punk has a mystery item in this bag that he wants us to think is the old world title, but it will be revealed as not. Because if this is supposed to be the world title and they didn't think to have it there or a belt there and it's still a phantom red bag, holy cow, that's rinky dink. Well, you know, he could. He, if, if his line would have been, I have something in here that is mine 
And I don't know, I never lost or whatever. It could be something other than the belt. But, you know, he did say, I held this thing over my head. I mean, what else did he hold over his head that you could put in a red bag? I don't know. I mean, presumably it could be something else, but I don't know. He's going to was- debut the new AEW spinner belt. <laughs> that would be funny. I was thinking maybe like, did I, I, I? it's been 15 years I know he was ECW champion. Did he like retire that belt? Maybe that's he's had that one for, for 15 years or an old Ring of Honor belt. I don't know what the answer is. And granted, did you know that in the room right now is an Emmy Award winner? I know. I want to congratulate wow. you. Wow. Thank you. The only one here who's ever achieved anything of value. Nice work, Shane. <laughs> Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Let's see this big gold Emmy. Wow, look at that, everybody. Holy smokes. That qualifies. Prefer to hold it by the bottom to it as well. Let's get a picture for the front page. Yeah, you want it. (laughs) (laughs) Granny, they say that Washington is a hot spot for UFOs. Is there any connection between aliens and Bigfoot? The animals are aliens. What? So you're telling me that my cat is from another planet? Yes. Due to Brian's birthday, Brian versus Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy looked a foot taller than Brian. He's not a foot taller than me. God. He's got the big poopy hair. He's, he's maybe. What is that noise? This was sure. with you and Vinny against uh, Chris Dreisack and Ideal Mexican. 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 Yeah. Yes. Brian pulled uh, Chris's panties down in the back. Yeah. His, his panties. Yeah, he saw his rice sack. S A J W N G A R E T T. S A J W N G A R E T T. His name is Sean Gary. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today. 